In this week's video, we're working on perfecting our steel stud framing method. We'll plywood line the container as backing to our white PVC wall panels, and we'll also show off our active ventilation solution using a 10 inch exhaust fan and a couple intake dampers. Stay tuned. The boys already have a good start on this container, the, the steel studding of the interior. Uh, you'll notice up at the top here, they've used these steel stud brackets. These are awesome. This profile right here, they just self-tapping screw up into the top 60 millimeter tubing of the container. And then it defines your ceiling height and how far your interior wall protrudes into your container. So this is meant for a two and a half inch steel stud to sit flush against the inside corrugations which I don't really like as much as an inch and five eighths steel stud, which is seven eighths of an inch away from the inside corrugations. And now you can get a nice layer of foam all the way around all of your interior studs and you don't have any thermal bridging. So these things are awesome, they're legendary. They're gonna totally speed up the time it takes for us to get started in framing. Every time we go to a frame a container, we're constantly struggling and dealing with the same age old problem of, okay, where do we start? How high do we cut the studs? And now there, there's just absolutely zero thinking involved anymore. This takes care of it. And so what we feel like is going to be the best uh, interior envelope is inch and five eighths steel studs, seven eighths of an inch away from the walls, uh, installed at the top track and bottom track, bottom track, wood screwed into the floor. And then we're gonna use two and a half inch steel studs across the ceiling. So the two and a half inch steel studs would allow for Still another inch above them, but three inches of foam in the ceiling, two inches in the walls, which is best envelope, I guess, in Canada anyway, especially if you're building a container home, you want to retain your heat up in your ceiling. And then finally, with this system, if you were to purchase it, it would also come with the corner casting covers. So a lot of containers have an angle iron back there rather than a rec tube. And so the end wall corner casting covers can connect to the top tracks of both side walls and then connect the top track that runs across the end wall. And that now defines everything on the same plane, the same distance away from the end wall. And that's done prior to spray foam. So it allows a nice even two inches of spray foam all around that corner casting where otherwise that corner casting could potentially be exposed inside your interior envelope. And that thing's gonna frost, condensate and drip all winter long. And so, that solved that problem and allows us to get the maximum ceiling height of this thing. For this mod, we have two 10 inch intake dampers that pair with our uh, T10 exhaust uh, fan. And so these here, the interior plane of them is uh, further recessed than the interior plane of the steel studs. And so we have a interior flashing kit that's gonna go on here and finish that all up. The customer's chosen to put the 10 inch intake dampers on this side of the container both high on opposite ends and then the 10 inch exhaust fan is going to be installed on the other side of the container dead center up high and so that'll pull air from both ends and blow it out the center of the can and get nice uh, even airflow and uh, try to regulate the temperature as best they can inside this container 
this door flashing kit's installed, we'll actually tape off inside uh, on this inside edge here. And so when the spray foamer fills this with foam, we can remove one of the side sections and then slide in your interior wall covering and then reinstall this and screw it all on. And now we have this uh, very nicely finished door and it's actually usable rather than, I guess the way anybody else just blows spray foam all over the door and the door seals. This is the tidiest way to insulate your doors and give you the best insulation value on your doors and also the ability to uh, finish the inside of the doors just like the interior of your container. And then finally this can has the container modification world dual swinger man door installed. And so these we featured lots throughout our channel. Uh, they work great. They got the header with the rain drip and this, you know, it was just raining earlier and I could just see it dripping nicely and nothing coming around and in to the container. And so it works really well. It's uh, designed for containers and it kind of moves with containers. So a lot of times when we did a North American man door, especially with the North American door seal, it's not necessarily the door that's a problem, it's a seal. And, and when things shift and move, it pushes on the door seal and then now your door seal actually isn't functioning properly. So these utilize a, an automotive style door seal or a side bulb seal, just like a, a trunk of your, your vehicle or potentially the door. Uh, and then that now moves with the container. This can actually pop right off and then just install back on. And so as things shift around, it keeps everything nice and sealed up. The customer asked us to install a makeshift floor drain by recessing it into the stock shipping container flooring and then have it come out through a bulkhead fitting out of the side of the bottom channel of the shipping container. Spray foamer's just finished up and cleaned everything up, so we'll just jump in here and see how it looks. We've taken the stiffener bars off the wall that we had to keep these things nice and plumb and all on the same plane and make sure that they're not twisting on us when the, the foam expands. So this is a 20 foot shipping container. This is what it looks like once it's all steel studded and spray foamed. And so, so this is gonna insulate very well. Uh, hopefully, you know, be more efficient for the customer and less expensive to heat throughout the winter. The next step is to line this container. So this customer wants half inch plywood. And then on top of this, we're doing our uh, PVC reline wall panels. That's gonna allow this customer to secure anything to the walls anywhere. So it's a good system. It's just double the work lining it. But uh, the plywood gives you that structure to mount anything. And then the reline panels gives you that uh, class A flame spread rating and the basically vapor proof interior finish. You know, it's a car wash panel. So, so they're great for handling any type of moisture that you throw at them and that's what's going to be inside this unit and so this will be a humid environment and it will require ventilation and that's why we've installed the two 10 inch intake dampers on the other side and then this uh, ac infinity t10 exhaust fan these things are amazing they have a very intuitive controller on them 
you can set high and low temperature parameters and also for uh, control the humidity. So if you want to keep this at a certain heat or at a certain uh, cold temperature, you can do that simply by uh, just adjusting the programmer. There's also a uh, Wi-Fi, you know, a smart setting on it and an app you can download and that's pretty cool too. So with that, if this container would be near a uh, Wi-Fi connection, you can actually have it send a notification right to your phone and let you know that you've hit that high parameter and the fans turned on and then you can even open it up in the app and, and see even what speed the fans operating at trying to uh, regulate the temperature inside this container. To plywood line a shipping container or install any other type of interior wall covering, when you've steel studded the container, it's the same as any other traditional construction. Just mark where your studs are and, and uh, start securing it, whether you want to glue the wall covering to the studs or just rely on your fasteners. But typically what I like to advise my staff to do is the ceiling first and then go down your wall so your wall sheets actually hold up your ceiling. So uh, make sure before <laughs> they get the next one up, I'll get the ceiling done in here. Uh, and then yeah, with this specific customer, we'll be doing the reline wall panel afterwards. But with this, we've installed the container wall flashing kit right at the doorway and that uh, trims off that edge nicely and allows us a nice clean finish there and not a ton of work to be uh, doing return trim or finishing around the corners because we're more metal guys. We're not, uh, we're not woodworkers or interior finishers. Another thing is just around the doors and so uh, we are going to line right up to the doorway and then because we're better with metal we'll just fold up a custom flashing that'll go over that and trim that up nicely and, and uh, continue with the galve theme that we got going on in this mod. So this here is very new to us. These uh, we call them inside corner casting covers and now you can see what it looks like after spray foam. So we like to install these prior to spray foam. It connects the vertical corner studs to the, the top track on the ceiling and then a top stud going across. But this, we would have to finish the ceiling to this height otherwise because we can't get two inches of foam around that corner casting inside. But now because of that, we're able to gain an extra valuable two inches of ceiling height inside this container. One thing I didn't get to QC this prior to the spray foamers uh, insulating this one, but I can see our guys installed the studs right close to the edge and they only left you know, just enough for the spray foamer to get his nozzle in here. And so that's kind of rude of us. We should have moved this over a bit more. Maybe what we'll do is pre-laser cut some holes here to signify uh, to our guys where those studs need to go. The foamer was able to get in here, thank goodness. And yeah, there is a nice vapor barrier all the way around these studs yet, but any closer and, and that would have been an issue. But now I guess using these inch and five eight steel studs, Normally they went right to the wall, but because we have them an inch and five eighths away, I'm thinking the spray foamer was able to actually just reach his hand inside the stud cavity and spray around. So maybe that solved that problem a little bit, but all in all, the fit and finish of this is great. Now it's going to be really easy to uh, do all the interior lining and, and trim around all that. And that's going to be a finished product. That's what you're going to stare at when you're all said and done. That's something for someone if they're looking to do a container home, maybe we powder coat those black or something, but something you'd want to do ahead of time. Otherwise, yeah, you're going to be losing so much interior, either uh, headroom or you're pretty much going to have to build your, your end wall this depth. So you, you could lose six inches of end wall or two inches of ceiling height, which is probably a similar amount of uh, uh, cubic feet that you'd lose without using these things. And so this here is our steel stud bracket after it's insulated so you can see you can't really see much of it it's all covered in foam so this little amount of metal here is the only thing that's uh, transferring the cold in this container aside from the door and so that now with this whole system we have the i would say the absolute least amount of thermal bridging possible
If you enjoyed this video, please help us out. Give it a like, subscribe to our channel and ring that bell for notifications. And as always, check us out at tcg.ca. Hope you learned something.